Inner Voice, a heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujian. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Inner Voice podcast. It's so great to be with you. I'm Dr. Fujian Zane, psychotherapist, author, and the originator of the Awareness Integration Theory. Our conversation in this podcast is about what matters most in our life. Our minds, thoughts, feelings, actions, relationships, and our fulfillment in this beautiful journey of life. I have good news for you. Our latest book, um, Intentional Parenting, is out for you. A practical guide um, to awareness integration theory. This um, has been published by um, Cambridge Scholarly and with my co-authors, wonderful, wonderful, beautiful ladies, um, Dr. Nicole Jafari and Dr. Eileen Manukian. This book, Intentional Parenting, um, it's available for you and you can get it from Amazon. What's important with this book, it takes you through step-by-step, step, um, not only the theories, interventions that are useful, from the awareness integration theory, but also from different stages, your infancy, toddlers, school age, teenagers, even young adults who might still be at home for um, with you and um, how to be with them, how to um, do parenting, um, very intentional and um, four different stages of life, which is very important. So I hope you get it. It's, um, we're excited. We're really excited that this book is out. I'm also excited today to have um, Amy Eliza Wong with me. She is a certified executive coach who has devoted more than 20 years to the study and practice of helping others live and lead on purpose. She works with some of the biggest names in tech and offers transformational leadership development and internal um, communication strategies to executives and teams around the world. We will be talking about her latest book, uh, Living on Purpose, Five Deliberate Choices to Realize Fulfillment and Joy. Isn't that a perfect, perfect guest for this podcast? I thought so. I really enjoyed our conversation and I'm positive you're going to enjoy our conversation too. Subscribe to this podcast, tell others to subscribe, share it with others, Go to my YouTube channel um, and uh, connect with me. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and um, um, connect with me through my website, fujanzain.com or any of the social medias. You can also, if you wanted to work um, with a self-help book, we can go through the awareness integration uh, theory um, on your own and um, enjoy it with journaling. And we've got an amazing um, research on this, which has minimized depression and anxiety and excelled self-confidence and self-efficacy. Go to get my book, Life Reset, the Awareness Integration Path to, the, to Create the Life You Want. And you can find that in Amazon or um, you can find it in um, my website. So um, share with me email me, share with me your thoughts and um, how it has helped you, uh, the book has helped you. I love hearing from you. If you have different topics, you want me to bring on a guest, you just want to share with me your love, just contact with me. So without further ado, here she is, Amy Elisa Wong. Hello, Amy. Um, everyone, Amy Elisa Wong. It is so nice to have you with me today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm so delighted. Thank you for having me. Of course. I want us to talk about your latest book, Living on Purpose, Five Deliberate Choices to Realize Fulfillment and Joy. Yeah. So yeah. what got you to want to do this? Well, it's... A, it's it, I've been fascinated with all things consciousness studies and just the bigger questions about life, why we're here, 
starting at a very young age, I was really quite spiritual, started meditating rigorously at, you know, 15 years old. So just very into what it, what it means to be a thriving human. And the first part of my life, um, I ended up in the tech industry. So I majored in mathematics from UC Berkeley and was quite technical for a good 10 years. This was after college and that was fine, but there was a part of me, I just knew I wasn't attending to. And after my first child was born, massive breakthrough, kind of breakdown breakthrough moment, went back to school and got my master's in a completely different field, just because it was fascinating to me, had no idea what I was going to do with it. Got my master's in transpersonal psychology. Now, little did I know that those two fields together really lend themselves perfectly to the field of coaching. Now, I had no idea that I would end up doing this work, but coaching really did find me in the year 2010. And, you know, I have been in this field now for over a decade and I am just, I'll tell you, I feel like I live a miracle every day in the hundreds and hundreds of conversations I've had with various folks from all walks of life. It's just, it became so clear to me that there were some pretty fundamental things that we could shift in our perception to really unlock our ability to live our best life. And so I knew exactly what the book was going to be in 2014, but I knew that I wasn't, it wasn't time to, I, I wasn't ready to write it. I just, I was still accumulating research and stories. And, and it was really in 2019 that I'm like, okay, I got everything I need. Let's uh, it's time to put this book out there. Cause this is going to help people. <laughs> and you say that this book is an indisputable map showing a clear way out of self-sabotage and suffering and into a life lived on purpose. Yeah. The best version of ourselves. Yes. You yes. talk about power of deliberate choices yeah. and um, and you say that you've all been pretty much going in a wrong way about it and it's not figuring it out. It's about feeling it out. That's right. Share yeah. with us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So this was one of the biggest ahas that I personally went through. And a lot of that was, you know, after my first child, he's now 14, but after he was born, I this massive wake up moment. And the, 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 the insight that hit me was, oh my goodness, I have been going about this search for fulfillment all wrong. It's not about figuring it out. It's about feeling it out. Now, really what this means, it, it stems from this rather universal truth that everything we want as humans, everything we think we want, whether that's a new job or it's to start a company or to retire or a relationship or a new house on a hill with a view, all of that stuff. We don't want it for the sake of wanting it or the, for the thing. We want it because we think it's going to make us feel a certain way. And that thing is a proxy for a desired feeling state, but we never really take it all the way. And the reason for that is I, I really believe it's because of how we are conditioned growing up. You know, we go to school and we're told, go get good grades so you can get into a good college and get into a good college so you can get a good job and you want to get a good job so you can make lots of money and then you can make lots of money so that then you can be happy. And so we place all of our trust in this, what I call like the formula, just kind of figure it out, do follow the strategy, follow this formula so that you'll live a great life. But we're never really asking ourselves, well, what is it that I want to feel? And is what I'm up to, is that a direct path to that? Because what, what that big wake up moment for me and what I help all my clients through is oftentimes we'll be chasing the thing by figuring it out, oftentimes forsaking the feeling because we haven't really just like, what is it that I want to feel? And so bringing that into awareness, wow, what is it that I want to feel? And just that right there, all of a sudden is going to shift your perceptual horizon where opportunities and possibilities and options that weren't visible before now all of a sudden become visible and so you're able to navigate in a more powerful way so for everyone who's listening and watching this i think what i'm hearing from amy is not that you just go with you know lack of impulse control and whatever you feel <laughs> what she's <laughs> really saying is 
It's like, grab that cupcake instead of the apple. Go for it. I know. That was, this is the first thing that came to my mouth, to my mind is like, I'm just going to go open the refrigerator and put whatever I want in my mouth. Right. But, but what you're really saying is um, stop the shouldism concept. And you talk a lot about the shouldism and what, you know, what you're shoulding. And um, so look at, it's not like let go of your wisdom. It's looking at the essence that you know pulls you through and it's um it's sharing with you that what you really need your body your emotions will take you toward it and say you know these are the things that will make me happy versus yeah. the society's got to tells me what to do and I got to do that now there's also this balance here which um I want you to share about is this balance of obviously the society will tell us what to do because uh, and if we want it to be successful in some level we got to incorporate to be mm -hmm. the person that I want to be and I say this because obviously I work with a lot of teenagers and young adults I think you know there's a wisdom that life just kind of like slaps us in after a certain age, but around teenagehood and young adulthood, where we're really trying to find our identity, finding, um, you know, what we're um, we're passionate about, to want to build a career or our experiences toward that, um, and then there is this maybe imbalance about, you know, going after just what I have pleasure and forget our responsibilities that life also brings us. So can you share a little bit about putting these two together and still working with our intention? Mm, yeah, because this is such a big, beautiful conversation and so much here we could dive in to, you know, and this is where, you know, I focus so heavily on the concept of choice in the book and particularly deliberate choice because choice is really everything. And the sum total of our choices dictates every aspect of our life, the quality of our life, our experience. And we kind of get that. And, you know, we, we do our best to make choices that serve us, but, you know, we're, we're constantly battling. What do I, do I choose this over that? Do I do this over that? And then we think it's a battle of willpower. And then we wonder, you know, it, it, there's just, there's so much here. And I would say, you know, to really truly live the life that we are born to live, it really requires the the ultimate ultimate choice that we want to really address first and foremost so that all the other choices are rather e not easy but they, they fall in line is the choice that really represents the relationship with ourselves and the reason this is so important and again i like i said this is our big conversation but the reason i, I want to talk about this is because that relationship we have with ourselves so what does that mean what is it that I believe to be true about me? What is it that I know to be true about me? What do I, what beliefs do I hold? How is it that I regard myself? That self-relationship, how I regard myself. I mean, we could just say straight up, it's self-love. That relationship with self forms the primary lens that we look out through to the world that's going to give rise to everything that we perceive thus interpret and think, say, and do. And so if we want to make, you know, if we want to really get to a place where it's not hard to choose, I'm going to use that example, not, you know, to choose an apple over a cupcake. Now, does that mean we choose an apple every time? No, that would, that would suck. Of course we want a cupcake every so often. Right. But in order to get to that place where it, it's, easier to identify the choices that would serve our highest good and then to choose those things that are of our highest good it really starts with going to the ultimate choice which is what's that relationship that i need to look at with myself yeah. and i'm also hearing you say and if it, if it's not matching what you're really meaning tell me but i'm also hearing you say that um the responsibilities of life that are there I can choose them versus be in them with a, what you call like sluggishness. And, um, you know, if there's a part that I look at something that I got to do as a chore and I don't like it and it feels like a should, you can still choose uh, responsibility and aspects of responsibility, which suits you because obviously, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't, you're not going to feel good either. So <laughs> it's 
it's more like, you know, if you just avoid responsibility, ultimately you're not going to feel that good either. No, that's exactly right. That's yes. exactly right. So it's yeah. like bringing those two together and whatever is in front of you, choose it versus feeling that you are, um, you, you've been shooting in it, you know, you've, yeah. been, you've been pushed into the should versus this is my next level and this is what I got to do. Oh, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the, the, I mean, so many of us operate from that word should, right? You should make your bed every morning. You should get more sleep. You should call your mom more. And it just, ugh, nobody, it, it just feels bad. You know, you feel guilty and burdened and it just, it's never, we know ne it never feels great it to use it on ourselves, right? It ruins the moment. <laughs> it does. It absolutely ruins the moment. And, you know, and you know, I think going back to this question about, you know, teenagers, I go, I should study and I should do, do this and I should think about my future. Well, the reframe here and the opportunity is, and there's, I really dive into this in living on purpose in the book. Like why is should so, why is it the worst word in the English language? And in large part, it's, it's the reason it's not really effective is because we don't realize it, but what's happening is that we're focusing more on avoiding negative consequences by using the word should than by actually focusing on what we actually want. And so that by using resistance and focusing on negative consequences, it's going to drag us down. Now there is a flip side to everything that we're looking at. And so a powerful, like if you say I should, you know, I should pay my bills or I should all, you know, nobody really wants to sit down and pay their bills, but we don't want to be a delinquent human. We don't want to, you know, have a high, you know, we don't want to be in debt and we don't want to have a bad credit score. But we could say something like, well, you know what? I could pay my bills right now and be released for the weekend and actually have fun. And so we could we can look at it like, oh, I get to, I could versus I should. And so to make it an active choice versus a burden, I'm really in focusing more on what is it that I want? Well, I want to be free and I want to be responsible and I want to feel good. Well, when you're focusing it on that in that way, it's like, oh, well, yeah because I could pay my bills right now. And then I don't have to think about it for the rest of the weekend. I mean, so it's just a simple shift in perception. You say in your book, the doorway to everything you really want is inspiration. And um, you talk about synchronicity and the power and the purpose. And you have a three uh, step um, to, to work through. One is accept the, con uh, accept the concept of synchronicity, synchronicity act on inspired thoughts and honor sluggishness. Yeah. Yeah. About that. yeah, absolutely. So part of what it, what I have found and what I've experienced and what I work with, with clients and with groups, you know, part of the magic of life is really leaning into that, that hit of inspiration, right? You know, where we get this idea of like, oh, this is a great idea. Oh, I want to, oh, that's yes. I, oh, I want to do that. And it's, you know, there's, there's a way in which we're going to confront stuff in our life. And we're going to get this breath of like, Oh, this is a great idea. Now, when we, that's feeling it out, when we feel for that, you know, and I, and I say it almost feels like, you know, that feeling where someone will suggest something, or maybe a book comes across your awareness or a conference. that's like, you go, and it's like the breath got knocked into you. Like that feeling, that that's inspiration. And when you follow, when you really listen to that and follow it, even if your logic is like, well, does this really make sense right now? Like, does this actually going to add up? See, that's figuring it out. Like, does this work out for the strategy for following the thing? When we follow inspiration, what happens is all of a sudden, things start to kind of fall into place, which feels kind of magic, but it's not. It's just, co like we could call it coincidence. But in my book, I call it synchronicity. What's synchronicity? It's that feeling of flow that has a sense, like it's a bit more of a higher order to it. It's not just happenstance. There's a bit more of a, the, a purpose to it. And it's by virtue of you really listening for that. <gasps> Because that, that feeling of inspiration is the path of least resistance to the path of most abundance. Now, as you do this, you're listening for inspiration. You're also going to feel, ugh, as you look at certain other options in your life. You, you know, you might look at, um, like, for example, you might be at Barnes & Noble in the magazine section, and you're just perusing all those magazines. And you look over at one magazine, and let's just say it's 
all things horses and you go, because you really have a thing for horses, but you don't really entertain that love because it doesn't make sense for your life because you're busy. But you look at that and you're like, oh, and you get that feeling. And then you look over and then you see the Harvard Business Review and you see some topic that's like, oh, like I should read that because my employer is really important. And, da, 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 da. and then you feel kind of heavy. Now, is it a that you can feel those two feelings? Now, one is very generative life-giving. It's very expansive. The other feels a little constrictive. Now, is there a right or a wrong to whatever you choose? No, either way is fine. But if you want to follow the path of thriving, listening for and following the feeling that goes, <gasps> all of a sudden, that's where ideas and possibilities are going to happen. So that feeling of sluggishness really is simply you telling you, yeah, you could go forth, you could do it, but you're probably not going to get the return in the investment that you put forth because you're in a very different receptive state here. Now, if you need to cover that topic at some point, it's going to cross your path and you just have to trust that it will. But in that moment to choose the inspiration over the constriction, that's really where things start to change. And that is so enrolling also to others. When you talk about synchronicity, synchronicity, somehow this type of an inspiration that's just like um that it's natural to you when it's being shared with others it pulls mm -hmm. people in have you noticed oh it is so contagious in the best way just people light up eyebrows get big smiles are huge the body language increases like yes totally <laughs> i've really experienced that in different projects where you know although i try to get everything that uh, you know it's inspiring to me but you know some of the stuff uh that you do you it's part of the shittism it's like well it's part of the game that i got to do this part uh, because it's part of the bigger picture but i don't really like this part i just like the bigger picture so but i've noticed that every time you come to enroll others in your ideas or you're just chatting and you're just like well how are you doing and i'm like yeah i'm doing this project this project this project and the ones that I'm really inspired with, mm. and my, like you say, the feeling is in there, the passion is in there. Mm. You can see everybody else's um, way of relating to that. Mm. And um, like you said, it's contagious. It's, it just expands. Like generative, as you, you the use the word you use, is it just expands. And it's so inviting for people yeah. to come in. And that's where a lot of the collaborative aspects also happens. In oh, life. absolutely. I mean, that right there, gosh, there's so much here. It's the, the collaborate. I mean, because we're, we're kind of raising the vibration here. And, you know, as humans, we're constant, we're in constant communication. Nothing's happening in a vacuum. And, you know, I do a lot of communication coaching because that, that to me is not just a passion, but it's an area of expertise because this medium of communications where everything is happening. Now, what we tend to forget is that we're not just transmitting words. Our job is to transmit a feeling. And we do that via the vehicle of these linguistic packets called words. And so the quickest way to, to transmit a feeling is to feel it first. If you, whatever you're feeling, the other people are going to feel too. And so when you've got that buoyant, energized, inspired state, and you're talking other people, oh, they're going to just follow right along. Now, the neurochemistry of that is one in which it's going to optimize you for your greatest thinking, for more imagination, for more creativity. And so there's so much in that, you know, sharing of the goodness. So following your inspiration and being, doesn't just benefit you, it benefits everybody else around you too. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yes. In your book, you share, choose to know that it's always working out for you. And then you have some steps. Yeah. Acknowledge you are in the shit moment. Mm -hmm. Choose to stop tolerating and make a decision to compose your internal conflicts and imagine a future as far as it feels good to you. And yeah. then I love this part. Come to the present. And think of your situation as all the past ones that you just kind of have been and done, you know, got pictures, videos, and you're done with them. And um, so it's, it's like, instead of getting caught into this, you transpose yourself in the future, look at yourself in the future as you looked at the past. It's like, yeah. done, I'm already covered, we got it. Yeah. And then come back to the moment that you are and 
act as if you already know you got this and it's going to be over. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, I'll tell you, this is one of my truly, truly, it is such a deeply rooted practice for me. It's not even a practice. It's just a way of being. And, and this is truly the path of freedom because, because what we're talking about here is life's happening all to all of us. It's happening with us, for us, to us. And there's not many things that are certain in life, except for a couple things, you know, we're all going to die. <laughs> we know that. And we know for certain that there's a lot of uncertainty, you know, that nothing really is for certain. And we're fairly clear that life is a mix of joys and tragedies. And, you know, when you look at this existence that we're in, it's predicated on the phenomenon of duality, right? We don't have birth without death. We don't have light without dark. We do not have up without down. And so we live in a universe of duality. And so we grow by virtue of joy and pain. Life is, we are going to experience both the positive and the negative. And, but we, as humans, we only just want to focus on the positive. We're like, this is really what's wanted. And then we say, well, all the things that hurt, that's not wanted. And we don't, that's, it's not working out for us. And I say, well, if we can get to this place to recognize that every, things are going to happen. And then you can decide, you know what? Both are serving me. The stuff that I chose, that's easy to say that's serving me because I chose it. But the stuff I didn't choose, like the, the, the mistake, the failure, the tragedy, uh, that actually, and, and, and I have not found one human that can't look back on a tragedy and go, yeah, it sucked at the time, but I got this, I got that, I know who I am. And so with, with the wisdom of this practice is, is we will be in our now moment and we can look back at the past and look at the crap and the shit that happened to us and go, yeah, you know what? That really sucked. But if I, I, I know this and I know that I know who I am and I've learned these things and I know I'm resilient and I wouldn't be who I am now if it wasn't for that. And so we, at some point in our future, we always look back with a sense of appreciation and understanding. So what this process that you just described is when we find ourselves in a shit moment, which we will. It's shitty. It stinks. It's awful. It's painful. It's whatever it might be. Instead of actively resisting it, going, gosh, this shouldn't be the case. Oh, it's not working out for me. Why is this so hard to say? Well, you know what? At some point in the future, let's imagine three years from now, I'm living my best life. Like I'm going to look back at this and I'm going to say, you know, sucked, but kind of had a part to play in getting me there. And so really what this is about is to notice those shit moments when you're in it. And switch the perspective to say, you know, how might this be on purpose for where I'm headed? And we immediately convert resistance to appreciation. And when that happens, so much more possibility emerges in how we can move with our moments and transform through them with a lot more joy and a lot more innovation. This brings me, I work a lot with trauma and I work with uh, people who have uh, terminal illnesses. And, um, it's an interesting. People get very, very afraid of cancer, rightly mm. so. But most of the people who I've worked with, which have they've had tremendous amount of traumas or have had some sort of um, ongoing chronic and um, um, illness, mm -hmm. you keep hearing the same thing you said, which is it made me choose a whole different lifestyle. It changed my priorities. Or if the priorities were the shoulds, you know, and putting other people um, ahead of you. And even if you're, if a healthy lifestyle always look like, a, well, I know I got to do it. I know it's a should thing. I got to do it. But, you know, I'm having too much fun right now. When something like that happened, they begin choosing um, a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They walk, they eat differently. And it's very different this time. It's not like, oh, damn, I got to do it. It's yeah. Like I'm choosing it because now I'm choosing the um, living. Yes. Instead of dying. Yes. Where before it felt like, I already know I'm living. So yeah. why, should I, why should I suffer with this? Yeah. Where now it's like, well, you might not. So they're choosing living and everything they got to do in order to live better. Um because in other choices, like priorities changed. Mm -hmm. Suddenly something, like you said, uncertain showed up and I get to choose again and again. And 
the word you use, deliberate choice yeah. of at one point I can get that anything can be gone. So as I'm looking at nothing is sustainable or um, you know permanent, then I can choose completely different in how I want to deal with life. Yes. And I think that's that's powerful when we look oh, at it. How beautifully said. Thank you know everyone living on purpose, Amy Elisa Wong. The, this is the book. You can get it in Amazon. Uh, where else can they get it? Barnes and Noble, Target has it, you know, really anywhere books are sold, you can find it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, let's talk about purpose, because yeah. like we talked about feelings. We talked yeah. about um, how to connect with yourself, how to look at all of that. Uh, we talked about uh, let go of the should and whatever it's there that you know that you want to experience, choose it, choose it powerfully um, with all of your inspiration and, um, you know, kind of like trust yourself and honor yourself, honor mm -hmm. what's coming up from here and move forward. But we talk about live purposefully. Can you share what that word means to you as you've been explaining it? Yeah, absolutely. And it really ties in beautifully with what you were saying about how earlier just how, you know, sometimes we'll have a tragedy or a trauma and we wake up to, and then, and we harness choice in a new way. And so for me, like, I love talking about pur purpose as a noun, no doubt, like as what is my purpose here on earth, but really what this book is about is really purpose as an adverb being on purpose, like as a state of being, which is to be, to be, to really wake up from autopilot. Uh, just as you were describing, it's waking up from that state where I've just been making habitual choices and been just kind of going through the motions and deploying, deploying survival mechanisms and redeploying patterns and really kind of waking up to, to what, what, how is it that I've been operating and how can I harness choice at the level of perception? And this is really what's key about my practice and my, and, and then the book is yes, choice at the level of action is important, such as apple versus cupcake, you know, but really what this is about is choosing at the level of perception. How am I going to interpret this? What am I going to make this mean? And so purpose in this regard is really about being purposeful in how we want to show up and how, and what we want to make our moments mean what we, and how we want to interpret the stuff of our life. And that's really what the five choices are about is to orient us in a way that we can make very purposeful frames through which we can make sense of all the stuff that happens and thrive unconditionally. That's what this is about. Yeah. Another, um, some chapters of your book um, also talks about looking at the sabotage. I, um, invented uh, a new psychology model, awareness integration therapy, where a part of that is integration, which is bringing, you know, cleaning up all the closets in a sec. Mm -hmm. And part of your book also, um, one chapter really looks at when you experience sabotage to not just dismiss it and, you know, try to avoid it or push it, or just figure oh, let me just figure out something and don't worry about it. And let me just go forward because if you don't handle it, it's going to keep coming back as an obstacle <laughs> in your life. That's right. So it's how to go back, how to look at it, how to bring it integrated into your system from your strength. And then, you know, moving along with that. Can you share a bit about that piece? Well, yeah, absolutely. And there's, you know, a, a big premise in the book is that, you know, we're going to have feelings and emotions and we are going to experience things on on that emotional scale whether it's joy all the way down to anxiety or depression or whatever it might be and instead of doing what a lot of us do which we tend to want to numb or sedate or control away the negative emotions and really just try to do whatever we can to feel good in a moment it's really to recognize that whatever we're feeling in a moment is really information it's information on how we've been focusing. And so instead of you know trying to be positive at all costs, it's really saying, you know, I'm going to let my feeling be my guide here because guess what? 
It's all about feeling anyway. Why? Because that's what we want. Everything we want is for a feeling. So why not kind of come back to this feeling state that I'm feeling more often than not? And my, how am I feeling in this moment? How am I feeling in this situation? And letting that feeling be our but the indicator for how that it is that I'm focusing. And so if we find ourselves feeling great, then keep going. Great. Then there's nothing left to do. But anytime you find yourself feeling that tinge of insecurity, the pang of anxiety, the heaviness of procrastination. And remember, sluggishness and procrastination, that's still information. That's good information. But it's 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 there to to prompt us to take a look, like, what is it that I'm standing for in this moment? What is it that I'm believing about myself in this moment? And we use, we use that, 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 that signal of feeling, we use it as a cue to, ah, is there, is there a way I can reshift my focus right now so that I can overcome this pattern that hasn't been serving me? Um, it's very important uh, what you said about how to bring everything together um, because then it makes your choices from a place of wholeness, makes it from a place that you're complete. Because if you are not integrated in that sense, what I've noticed a lot with my clients yeah. is, um, you know, you will make a choice from one part of you, which didn't suit the other parts of you. Sure. And then other parts will show up and say, hey, <laughs> what about me? <laughs> right yeah and sometimes you have this inner conflict between the couple of different needs mm -hmm. uh, which will be showing up and then there are different feelings that are mm -hmm. are needed right so yes i would have the, the desire and the feeling of feeling accomplished um confident and uh, want to go and then in order to have the feeling of accomplishment and confident Obviously, these are all the tasks that I got to do in order to achieve something and to get that. And then there's another part is that I just want to relax. <laughs> I do not want any stress. Yeah. And um, I want the emotion of and the feeling of comfort. Yeah. And sometimes the two are both amazing. But but they're they're not, <laughs> exactly. And here as although I'm listening, but there's listening to two different parts, which absolutely want different things. Oh, and don't we all feel that, you know, on a Monday morning where I want to sleep in or I should go to the gym. I don't, I want to, yeah, it's, it's all that. Yeah. We, we, you know, many of us feel that conflict all the time. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there's, the way, the way to really work with this in a holistic, integrated way, I love how you said that. That's because that's really what it's about. I, I introduce the concept of a stance. And so a way to really, like to meet these seemingly conflicting things in a way that we can shoot, make choices that make it all work is we have to zoom out. We have to zoom out. So instead of just looking at this level of, oh, I want to be accomplished or, oh, I want to relax, we got to zoom out. And then the big question that we want to ask is, you know, what am I ultimately standing for here? What is it that I am ultimately standing for? And just by asking that new question that is at a higher elevation, oh, now my values come into focus. Now reality and my wisdom have a seat at the table table where they're able to say, you know, right. You're standing for well-being and you're standing for joy and you're standing for health. And you know what? I think both can be true here. So why don't you, why don't we take a look at this project and instead of doing all of it, like you thought you wanted to, let's map it out, create some milestones and then go for a walk. You know, it's a beautiful sunset and, you know, go with your neighbor. And so just by asking a new question, by zooming out and asking, what am I ultimately standing for here? You're going to see your situation in a whole new way and come up with a solution that no doubt is going to, you're going to be able to bring both together, but it requires a better question about what's happening. Yeah. Yes. Now, living on purpose by Amy Elisa Wong. Um, Amy, anything we haven't touched upon so far that yeah. you really want everybody to know? You know, I, I mean, I just, I, it, this, it's when it comes to the process of personal development and transformation, 
You know, I love, most people are really like, yeah, that's a good thing. I want to, I want to attempt this. And there's this idea that it's a lot of work and it's really hard. And, you know, and what I propose is, you know, while it can feel that way, it also can feel, can feel, it can feel effortless. It can feel fun. And it really depends on the frame. And something I focus heavily on, particularly in part three, is that for most people on the journey of personal transformation, they like this, the conversations, they get it, they're, they're up for it. And for a lot of people, they get that they're making choices that don't serve them. And they get, like, for example, the, the, the one of the, the, the ultimate choice that really holds us back is self-limiting beliefs, such as I'm not good enough, I'm incomplete, I'm inadequate. I'm unworthy, I'm incompetent or wh whatever shape or form. And all of us have entertained, you know, those fears at some point, those, those limiting beliefs. Now for most people on the journey that of, for personal self-development, they get on some level. Yeah. I get that. I'm kind of choosing that. I'm, I've got this imposter syndrome. I, I kind of, I get that I'm choosing that I'm not worthy or I'm, I'm not as good as my colleagues. I, I get that. I'm choosing that. I don't know how to choose otherwise. And so a big part of this process is not just recognizing what are those beliefs you're holding that you probably either know or you don't know and what you're choosing. It's really getting to that place of accessible choice because, you know, how many times have you heard on the path of life, Hey, self-love is everything you want to love yourself. You know, unconditional self-love is where it's at. I mean, it's almost like a cliche and you're like, well, how the heck do I do that? Like I get it, but it's not coming from here. And so what this book is about, it's really a journey. It's a roadmap to get to that accessible choice because to get that you're not choosing to love yourself, but not know how to, that's maddening. And so using a lot of logic and some of the social neuroscience, I'm, we get to a place where it's like, ah, ha, ha, I totally get that I'm whole and complete. And now I know how to choose it. Aha. And I get that it's a process. I get that. But to derive that organically, oh, that's where it's at. And so that's really why the roadmap has been spelled out in the way that it has been in this book. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much for the time you gave us. Yeah. And, uh... Well, beautiful book, Amy Eliza Wong, Living on Purpose, Five Deliberate Choices to Realize Fulfillment and Joy. And you can also find her at alwaysonpurpose.com. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with me. And for all of you who are out there, create an amazing life for yourself and everyone around you. And until next week, bye-bye.